do you have questions about gluten? Do you wonder if you are gluten sensitive? Do you wonder if you have celiac disease? It should be an easy question to answer, I know. We've certainly known about celiac disease for a very, very long time. But still, over 90% of the people that have it remain undiagnosed. I know it seems ridiculous, and especially something that's impacting our health so dramatically and so covertly. Um, and what I mean by that is the fact that someone can have a celiac disease or gluten sensitivity and not have the overt symptoms that you'd expect um, because historically the, the diseases have been put in the digestive category. So you accept, expect somebody to be losing weight and having diarrhea and gas and bloating and, and just pretty dramatic digestive complaints. And it turns out that's not the case in, in, for many, many people. Uh, really, they say that if we were just discovering the disease today, we would put it more in the neurologic category than in the digestive category because so many people suffer from uh, neurologic complaints like depression and anxiety and brain fog and mood swings. Uh, schizophrenia is in that category. Um, pains and numbness, joint pain. So there's a lot of neurological complaints. Seizures is another one. Headaches, migraines. So it's a long list on the neurological side. There's, there's definitely a, a long list digestively potentially as well. Um, but I know in my case, I'm gluten sensitive and I had zero digestive complaints. And so it can be misleading that way. And they call gluten the great masquerader because it's sort of at the back of so many different conditions that people are unaware of. And certainly if you live in the United States or a lot of developing, uh, non-developing, I mean industrialized nations, um, wheat is everywhere and so it's very easy to be ingesting a lot more of it than you even realize and you just don't consider it to be a culprit so here in the u.s certainly we hear a lot about gluten but really where to start and uh, i do want you to know there are some great tests available so kind of a two-fold point here one is that there really are some amazing comprehensive tests that will evaluate celiac disease as well as gluten sensitivity and I really like to know both of course because ultimately the treatment is identical which is remove gluten from your diet and let's heal your gut, optimize your immune system and any other system that's been compromised. So we want to know the answer. Does your body like gluten or not? And then on the other side of the coin there are definitely people who their immune system is not reacting to gluten as a protein but Americans tend to eat a lot of refined carbohydrates, so they're eating the white flour and the overly refined kind of products, and those are just not healthy. So I think that's where some of the confusion comes from in the, those who kind of speak against gluten being a real thing, is that um, they say, well, everybody could you know, benefit from not use, eating refined carbohydrates, and that's certainly true, but there is a distinction for those of us who really have an immune reaction to the protein. So that means I could sit down to the most unrefined type of wheat, like a wheat berry, and I would still have a very bad reaction, even though it's a nice whole food, if you will. So um, it's important to know the testing is out there. And the other thing I really wanted to review is that I'm sometimes asked, can you reverse this? To date, I don't know of anyone who has reversed a case of celiac disease or gluten sensitivity. Uh, theoretically, uh, Dr. Alessio Fasano, he's currently out of Harvard, uh, is world renowned. He told me personally that theoretically, if somebody really healed their gut and optimized their immune system, uh, they should theoretically <laughs> be able to tolerate gluten again. Um, but that's it, it's theoretical. Nobody's actually done it that certainly I'm aware of or not in enough numbers to make it something we should talk about. But what we do need to talk about is the reason that your health is not the way you want it to be. And if gluten is a component, it's not hard to figure that out. Uh, one thing I do run across very frequently and I hear from people all over the world who have had celiac testing and they send me the results of their tests because they say their, doc their doctors are confused by the results of their tests and they can't, they're not telling them whether they have celiac disease or not or whether they have gluten sensitivity or not. And the confusion really comes from the fact that 
you're kind of building a case a lot of times when you're figuring out uh, celiac or gluten sensitivity. It would be so great if the tests were perfect <laughs> and it was just very black and white and it's, and it's really not that way. So researchers for celiac develop what's called the four out of five rule and that is that you have a positive blood test, you have symptoms associated with the condition of celiac disease, uh, your symptoms improve when you remove gluten from your diet, you have genetics for the disease, and you have a positive biopsy, intestinal biopsy. Now the biopsy is expensive, it's invasive, but you only need four out of the five of what I just said. So the biopsy is the expensive invasive part, and if the other four are positive, that's enough. You don't, it's not mandatory that you receive the endoscopy. Now, uh, even within the world of endoscopy, there's a lot of confusion. Um, Dr. Marsh from England is the man that developed um, the Marsh classification system, which basically speaks to how much damage is occurring in the lining of the small intestine to receive a positive diagnosis. And it turns out that Dr. Marsh himself, who founded <laughs> his own classification system, wanted it to be known that as soon as there was any inflammation, so not necessarily destruction of the lining, but inflammation of the lining, he wanted it to be known that that was a positive indicator of celiac disease. And that somehow got misconstrued over the years, and it's not what doctors are doing. So if somebody has inflammation, they're, they're not giving them a positive celiac diagnosis, even if all those other criteria are there. So you can see where the confusion abounds, but uh, here at Root Cause, we specialize in this area. More than happy to help. As I said, I speak to parents and adults and all ages all over the world about this topic because it's just really ridiculous and such a waste of a life to have a reaction to this protein and not know it and keep eating it because your doctor said he or she thinks it's fine and your health is really suffering. That's just a crime. So if you wonder whether you're gluten sensitive, I am more than happy to help you. We are a destination clinic here at Root Cause. We're located in Saratoga, California, but people do fly in from across the country, mostly a little bit out of the country, uh, but mostly within the US. And um, we're delighted to help with the tools that we have. And in addition to finding out for sure whether gluten's a problem, then you have to jump into what we call the secondary effects of gluten, which is how it's compromised your immune system, if there's any opportunistic uh, organisms, whether they're bacteria or fungi or parasites, protozoa. I know that's quite a little list, but these are opportunistic organisms that have gotten a foothold in your system, primarily the gut, secondary to the immune system being compromised by gluten. You can have uh, viruses, there can be heavy metals, there can be a lot of different um, stressors on the body that all have to be addressed, including hormonal balance. So these are all the things we look at. And if you're somebody who really wants to improve your health, we are here for you. Feel free to give me a call. The clinic number is 408-733-0400 or visit the website at rootcausemedical.com.